Okay, so let us get started. So, it is week 5, uh, session 2 and uh, so before we get into the uh, you know today's session, does anyone have any questions or concerns regarding the last class? Yes. Uh, I want to know how much about Bloom taxonomy should we know about. We should just be careful of the keywords and just understand the basics of it or we need to read more about Bloom taxonomy, how it is being used in the lesson plan, how it is being used in the classroom. Uh -huh. uh, I mean the application part of it. Okay. So the question was how much deep <laughs> or how much wide? <laughs> We should know about the Bloom's taxonomy, right? It is a topic itself, and there are hundreds of PhDs on <laughs> Bloom's taxonomy. And uh, you know, in each different levels, since 1958, you can imagine, right? All the educational, <laughs> you know, um, theory, you know, theories and people they always cited and used the Bloom's taxonomy. So for Part of this course, uh, you just do not have to go deeper, it is just a little wide in the sense like what are the categories at least the levels or the taxonomy levels and whether it is a higher level or a lower level, you know when you see an action verb, whether if you can identify whether it is a higher level or the lower levels of Bloom's taxonomy, okay? And then how do you apply that one um, into the uh, into the uh, the learning context that you are doing? So, yes, did I answer the question? Okay, so don't don't Google it too much about Bloom's taxonomy and don't read too much about don't spend too much. Whatever I am covering in the slide should be more than enough for the midterm and the final exam, okay? Great. Any any other questions? Any other question? So, let me briefly review. So, what, what was what what was the main things that we discussed last class? Actions were? Yeah. Learning objectives. How to write? Bloom's taxonomy and the learning objectives. So, why we selected Bloom's taxonomy? Because all the educational teaching and learning, it is kind of Bloom's taxonomy, it is kind of the basic. So, I am just going through again some of the things I will repeat, okay. So, the more you hear and it will stuck in your in your mind, okay. So, that is the one reason. So, you know what are the curriculum and learning domains that we kind of just briefly can someone tell what are the curriculum or the learning domains? Cognitive, Cognitive psychomotor. psychomotor and the affective. So, whenever you select a technology, it is very important which domain that particular topic learning task it is more focused. So, that is important. Uh, cognitive, psychomotor and affective. Then we also discussed about the topic analysis. What is the topic analysis? Correct, correct. So, basically put it you know what are the facts, what are the concepts and what are the principles needed for the instruction. So, that is kind of the topic analysis. That is good. So, then we kind of said in any learning this is one of the key thing what the principles relational rules help us to predict explain control circumstances or describe relationship between two concepts typically expressed in if then statements. So, all the higher learning if they can have these principles have an idea that means you really achieve the learning goal in that particular task. It is not about just recall the facts and concepts. I am not degrading the facts and concepts, okay. It is very important, but sometime some particular situations, let us say for example, you are a pilot. 
So, how do you land the plane on the, so you know the concepts, the principles, you know the height and width, but at the same time he has to immediately recall some of the facts, you see some concepts at the same time he has to identify okay what is the relationship between the ground and the height, <laughs> right. So, when to press, so all those things comes uh, there as well. Okay, so then we discussed about why we need an instructional, uh, sorry, learning objectives because there is no way right now to what is going on in your mind and uh, so we need some kind of a, an evidence that the learning has happened. So, learning objectives kind of help us to uh, in that aspect. So, then I also talked about the different levels, the program level, course level objectives. By the way, sometimes you know I told you what is the one word that you should not use while you write the understand, but you can use in the program level objectives or course level objectives it is ok, like a goal ok. So, even I even though I said do not use it. I was meaning for to the lesson level and the module level objectives, ok. But in the program level objectives and the course level objectives you can use that because it is kind of the goal, bigger picture kind of thing, ok. So, today it is just a uh, topic it is for just evaluate the learning objectives. So, when you see your learning objectives, how do you evaluate, how do you judge it? So, where does it come this in the Bloom's taxonomy? So, this learning objectives, so this is a learning objective ok. So, where what level is this one in the Bloom's taxonomy? Evaluation topmost higher level right. I am not asking about describe learning objectives, I am asking for you to evaluate a learning objective. So, once you let us say you became the consultant or one of the big company they want to implement a big huge training program, then they gave their learning objectives to you right. So, the, the learning objectives determines your decisions on what kind of educational technology you are going to use. But if you do not know how to evaluate the learning objectives, then it will impact determine the decision on what technology you will be using. Another important thing is, um, so let us say your objectives was describe, what is the word describe where it comes? Knowledge or comprehension right, knowledge or comprehension. So, your objectives was you told the students ok, today we are going to talk our objectives for this lesson is to describe. What if you ask a question about evaluate this x? So, your objectives was describe x or whatever, huh? but the question that you wrote was about making a judgment or an evaluate, is it fair to the students? Why? Uh, if we if we just uh, see from the perspective of levels, uh -huh. so the recall or recall type of uh, information, mm -hmm. uh, there the student need not to have need not require to make a judgment or to synthesize anything mm -hmm. at, at that point while answering. Mm -hmm. If we are asking for a evaluate type question, uh -huh. then in that case he has along with the facts, he uh -huh. has to also see the context there mm -hmm. of the question or the mm -hmm. problem mm -hmm. and then probably apply as well. So, there are, I mean we are asking more from the student. But have you seen the questions like that? <laughs> yes. In your learning right. Some teachers they just briefly say ok this is the topic, <laughs> then the question comes anywhere out of some <laughs> questions. 
Is it fair? No, it's not fair. Say so good instruction should always tell the students where you are going. Then you evaluate based on that one. Okay, but in my in this class, <laughs> MTech and PhD students, I might be little liberal <laughs> to have this discussion and more deeper learning because you know your level of. Uh, so I might ask questions from. No, I am just kidding. <laughs> More than time, I don't ask any out of syllabus. Okay, <laughs> but just want you know it depends up upon the level of the students. Okay, great. So let's move back. Okay, so what I want, what I'm going to do is that um, I'm going to share a Google Docs with you. Let's see if you see if I can if you have access to that. Can you just go to your, did you get a uh, notification about evaluating learning objectives in a document Google Docs? Can someone check? Or, oh, Moodle is, okay, okay, so then I think that's great, thank you. So what? we are going to do since I thought today I'm not going to spend too much time on teaching it's more an application activity today okay oops because so what I want so I think those who submitted the learning objectives I put all your learning objectives here and what I want you to do just to recheck if I made any mistake so go ahead and put the discipline uh, sorry, the topic it's their probability, then discipline, I think it's the science, right? So science, then class if it's 11th or 12th, then subject is, this is maths, right? Right, Sony, I'm just take, getting yours as an example. Okay, so then instructional hours, what is that instructional hours? Number of hours spent on? Okay, so what I want just in a common way, let's say if you are teaching a two hour instructional hours, can you cover this particular topic in a two hour instructional hours? Okay, and then I'm not asking about, talking about, let's say for example, if one hour of instructional hours is equal to three hours of outside the students has to spend on that particular hours. So that's kind of a, there is no definition like that, but that's kind of a normal norm. Okay, if the teacher is teaching one hour in the classroom, the student has to spend at least three hours outside the classroom. Does that make sense? So you have to plan like the readings and watching the videos, doing the assignments, all those things comes in the, uh, uh, in the other students, what students will be doing. So here what I am asking is, what is the minimum, like the instruction hours, let's, whether it's a one hour or two hour or one week, it's up to you. About to teach, <laughs> okay. But I would personally prefer to put it as two hour to keep it more standardized. Don't put one week <laughs> to teach this part, because probability you can teach for one week right or two hours so I just want to get you to limit into that two hour session okay again this is a continuous improvement process okay so over the time when we go we will kind of come back we might change oh maybe this concept it's we won't be able to teach in this class maybe I should throw this one so we might come back and change that one later Okay, great. Is that clear, all, all of you? Okay, so just to go ahead, and, okay, I think uh, Sonika did that one. Okay, now, okay, okay, so what I want you to do, so, um, so I think uh, Ram is going to share who is going to do what. So you are going to, for example, Sonika's learning objectives will be evaluated by Sunny or Sunny's learning objectives will be evaluated by some other person. Okay, so then you will use this is the standard. You need to write down 
whether what is the level of Bloom's taxonomy, whether it is a lower level or a higher level, what level and is there any action verb in the learning objective and content reference then definitely it is there. Then is there any levels of achievement if it is a procedural learning objective, do they have a levels of achievement in that and the uh, any conditions or performance tools or information will be given. So, these are the four steps kind of the rubric while you evaluate um, the each learning object. So, you will write um, in the same Google document for example, Sunny is going to evaluate Soniga. So, you will write that then you try to modify. So, basically Soniga will be the uh, subject matter expert and you will be the instructional designer. So, the vice versa. So, so just take uh, 10 minutes to do that one. So, then after the 10 minutes you write down your way of modifying that uh, uh, objectives and then you will get 10 minutes to talk with the subject matter expert, clarify your confusion like ok are you do you have any prerequisites for this one. So, then uh, so, then we will present at the end, is it ok. I think Ram can. Uh, like the order for working together is like as shown in the left hand side in the document. Uh, Sonika and Sunny will evaluate each other's work. Same goes for Sakib and Sandeep. The logic behind is because you have chosen the same domain mathematics like that ok. And Arjun and Ashi is because you both are working with physics. So, you can interchange with each other. Uh, Kishore you are working on music theory right and so, Kritika you work with Kish his theory ok and if you have some work you can share it with uh, Kishore to ev evaluate. Sure, sure works at least something he will be able to give some right. Yes. Ok. Yeah. So, that way. Um, also, please do okay. not start editing the document directly. Uh, you can see the that icon here, no? Below share button. So go to suggesting mode and then do it. Okay. Thanks. Um, Kirtike, if you can just copy and paste um, your learning objectives in the same document um, uh, that you have written. Um, so this one I took it from whatever it submitted for the second draft. Okay. Uh, we want to give, we will mm -hmm. just write below that point. Uh, so, I am in the suggest mode. Uh, so, just for example, let us say I am there, mm -hmm. you can see. So, probably let us say if I need to write okay, uh, action verb like that, I will do this way or I go to next line and write all the comments for that. So, I am just trying to understand like how Correct. You can also, if there is a particular word that you have, then select that word and you write it. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay, okay. Yeah. But don't use too many comments, otherwise, the talk gets pretty. Yeah, alright. Okay, it is 2.45 now. So, now you can, you know, talk with your subject matter expert clarify uh, your suggestions or you know the change that you have made in their learning objectives the other way around also can do. Let us take some reflections now and uh, so when I was you know working as an instructional designer whenever I go with the subject matter expert you know the medical educators instructors they are very uh, vocal they just started to talking about the medical <laughs> all the history and and then I will quietly listen. So, that is what happening now also right. So, as a subject matter expert you will you want to talk you will you know the content <laughs> and you will just keep on talking then the instructional designer or the person who is making the decision he does not know that much content. 
you know it, it's a challenge for the person right to make the decision okay what technology uh, so yeah, again there is, sometimes there can be conflict okay so the content experts say i have a phd in medicine then who are you to talk to me how to teach <laughs> you see so that challenge can come and again it's it's a, whenever especially when you implement this program in k12 education or higher education setting it will be very challenging you go as an outside technology consultant or an instructional designer most probably they don't accept your suggestions okay but if you are in the industry not in the academia but in the industry they it's a mandate right so everyone has to have this knowledge and skill and you know so for in that case your job will be very easy you, you know you will have more authority you know actually it's kind of the you know the instructional design is also kind of coming to the project management actually i don't have that much time to talk about the project management it's a big part it's a good skill to have and uh, actually i am a pmp have you heard about project management okay uh, it's a um, pmp certification project project management institute pmi since it's kind of coming the discussion so that's what i thought um, project management institute they give a certificates on project management it's a very good skill to have actually you know when if you have a time and the money to take the exam and the certification i would strongly recommend to do take the exam okay so what i want to say sometimes you know the conflict management so in the project management it's one of the topic it's the conflict management how do you manage the conflict like the, if the subject matter in experts say no i don't want to work with you <laughs> so how do you manage that one okay so back to the point uh, so let's each take a role and share your experience as a subject matter expert and also your role as the content okay let me start with the uh, sunny in in particular focus on the learning objective okay writing the learning objective uh, so should i talk uh, specifically towards my, uh, in relation to my content or like general observation so just to share your first experience about evaluating you know rewriting sonica's learning objectives what did you learn what were the suggestions that one or two important things you know i know this is an open you know this will be the next class onwards this will be the pattern okay so your content will be criticized publicly it's past part of what <laughs> learning to improving okay so you can tell uh, in that aspect and what she can improve her topic and the vice versa so whatever the learning that you learn uh, and suggest so uh, in the uh, in the first pass i okay so let okay. me put that one in the so then we can if you want i can show that uh, topic as well but otherwise it's also fine but i can talk in general talk talk, talk in general okay. okay it's fine it's fine <laughs> okay. okay 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 so let me hear uh, okay. first then i will so uh, again uh, i felt that uh, when we are taking the role of uh, an instructional designer uh -huh. uh, probably we are looking at the subject listen listen santeep listen to probably this. we are looking at the subject from a different lens uh -huh. so while evaluating so uh, sonika's uh, uh, learning, learning objectives uh -huh. i was uh, i mean i did not bothered about the content first uh -huh. i was looking at whether the structure is proper so for example whether the action verbs were there and and how it is connected to the content reference mm -hmm. so i was mainly focused on the structure of the learning objective mm -hmm. then i so while i was discussing in the second phase while i was discussing with sonika a few of the doubts which i had regarding mm -hmm. uh, what she meant by that sentence so mm -hmm. then i kind of you know took the inputs from her that okay yeah this is it that way this is that way but initially when i did the evaluation i uh, scanned and 
uh, you know checked mainly the format mm -hmm. and uh, suggested maybe uh, a few action verbs here and there wherever it was required if it was missing then i uh, just wrote a comment saying that it was missing or if something was unclear to me i wrote that it mm -hmm. was unclear to me then i clarify in the second phase i took inputs from her like okay what she meant by that what she mm -hmm. meant by that uh, so there was a lot of uh, input in the second phase mm -hmm. on the side of the content because mm -hmm. uh, from some of the, a few of the sentences it was not clear mm -hmm. that okay what was the concept and mm -hmm. uh, how exactly it will be uh, used as a learning objective so mm -hmm. that a lot of clarity was uh, provided like after in the discussion phase mm -hmm. so that's uh, my mm -hmm. reflection okay so i really like what he said you know that's one part actually you objectively evaluate the learning objectives objective in the sense you had the steps right step 1 step 2 step 3 step 4 sunny was kind of objectively evaluating the learning objectives, whether there was an action verb or whether there was a content reference, you know. So, definitely, exactly that is one part because you do not know the content, right? So, you only know, okay, so to see the keys to help to write the assessment items actually to test the learning knowledge, you need a clear learning objectives, right? So, I think that that part it is very crucial to objectively evaluate what are the main steps. So, then what is what's the other one? So, then after you talked with the subject matter expert, so it is very common like uh, um, especially uh, if you are a very expert in the subject, probably you do not know how to share step by step. It is research based actually, ok. So, they, they do have the mental image in their cognitive level when they do the task like a surgeon who is doing a surgery, there are some structured procedures there, but the, the decision that he makes where to put his knife, sometimes it is very mental, the calculations he cannot explain that is the expert like. Uh, can you yes. say it is like a tacit knowledge? Yes, exactly. So, yes, yeah, so, sometimes we really will not be able to detailed in minute level. Minute. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, but after, uh, so it can happen in the, in the instructional design also. Like uh, when you talk with the subject expert, they will say, you know, at the end of my class, this is what I want my students to do. Just one sentence. So, then you will catch, oh, it is not about the facts and concepts to repeat, but this is what they want to do. So, then you will help the subject matter expert, ok, now I got it. So, let us rewrite. So, then let us see whether it is a, then again it is kind of comes whether it is a higher level, the Bloom's taxonomy or the lower levels of the Bloom's taxonomy, ok. Okay, so let us hear from uh, Sonika. So, how was as a subject matter expert and also the instructional designer or let us say educational technologist, instructional technologist because since it, this is class it is more about an instructional technologist, educational technologist. Let us say you are going to suggest a technology uh, for that particular uh, topic. So, how do you lead yes. answer? Uh, sir, he used the word action word, he used correct most of the time, but mm -hmm. uh, according to the question I suggested him some like he used to demonstrate. So, in that word I focus more on to solve or to apply because we are in maths. Uh, mm -hmm. If it will be better to use demonstrate while we are doing chemistry or some uh, geometrical aspect of mathematics uh -huh. where uh -huh. we have using protector or that thing. Uh -huh. So, I suggest him to sol use listen, solve, use solve. To, to solve or to apply. So, I use that. Then uh, we uh, use, I got the idea that higher level we are in Bloom's technolo uh, taxonomy because here you use the word uh, demonstrate which is the application part and again he used the word analysis. Oh. So, it, it is to identify. Mm -hmm. So, basically we are in a higher. Then there is also principle of recall principle is used because he is using some formula. Mm -hmm. Without that formula student can't even move forward forward mm -hmm. steps. Mm -hmm. So, yeah recall principle is always there 
and we have a doubt sir uh, like uh, the need of stepwise instruction needed in procedure so we we were having discussion so in this he used the word uh, demonstrate uh, in procedure he wants to use demonstrate while i am in more uh, describe or explain uh -huh. and while going in bloom's taxonomy uh, uh -huh. that dis uh, explain or describe is more on com comprehension level mm -hmm. while sunny wants an application level mm -hmm. so i want that procedure should be in comprehension level uh -huh. and he wants it in application level uh -huh. so we have a small disagreement on this basis uh -huh. so we are leaving this to you <laughs> correct correct so did, did you get the problem now so sunny is teaching a skill the focus it's a uh, procedural domain right it's, his focus is on procedure, then the, um, uh, Sonia was trying, okay, but still they want to explain that or describe that particular thing. Is it good or bad? Did, did you get what I am trying to say? No? Okay. Uh, so the main focus of this learning object is, is what? Procedure, right? So then at the same time, um, okay, let me put it in another way. Uh, some people, they do know how to bicycle, right? We all know how to bicycle, right? But if I ask you, I think there was a question about that one. How do you, can you describe the steps in <laughs> bicycle? You know how to do it, right? You demonstrate how to do, do the bicycling, right? But if I ask you, can you describe the steps in bicycling? That's kind of the comprehension level we are testing, right? Sometimes, in some learning context, we cannot demonstrate that particular skill, but we can ask them to describe that particular steps. Okay? It's okay to have both. Okay? So it's okay to have both to describe the steps or <laughs> demonstrate the steps. It's the learning environment. Any, any thoughts or comments? On? Does it make sense? It also depends upon the learning context. Where is the learning context? Where it's happening? Let's say if you are, I think the NASA is going to send the Artemis on Saturday to moon, right? So, okay, so let's say someone scientist, NASA scientist is teaching some procedure. Can we do it <laughs> on this earth? Some steps we cannot only do it in where? <laughs> in moon only, right? But still they have the simulation and stuff, I am just... So, it, sometimes it depends upon the learning context. Okay. A, any, any other comments? Okay. okay. So, let's uh, go to the... I really like the Mridangam. I, yesterday only I <laughs> looked at the Mridangam. It was a musical instrument. It's wonderful. Okay. So, I think I will start with Kirti. Huh? Just to share your experience as a subject matter expert and also as a instructional technologist helping uh, Kishore to teach his students how to <laughs> learn Mridangam. So, what, how do you help him? Yes. Uh, sir, first of all, uh, earlier uh, when I was uh, trying to read all these objectives and uh, the facts, principles on my own, so uh, it was kind of a uh, bit difficult even as evaluating on the Bloom's taxonomy oh. levels because uh, all this content is very alien to me. I don't even know the ABC of music. So, I think um, one of the things that I realize it to be an act uh, to be work as an instructional designer, you mm -hmm. need to know the subject matter at least mm -hmm. uh, a bit. So, I was asking Kishore about all these concepts in uh, in the first uh, phase only, mm -hmm. while I was supposed to do it on my own, but I was not able to. So, I asked him. Uh, during that time only okay. and when he explained some of the parts then it made sense and I was able to evaluate all those uh, objectives. Uh, uh, what I felt very uh, uh, 
uh, very fascinating about his uh, uh, the way he has uh, uh, written all these concept principles and procedures and uh -huh. LO's uh, learning objectives is that uh, he has moved uh, beyond the lower level and uh, all his LO's lie in the higher level so uh, it's at the application level analysis level and even at the evaluation level so that is something that we try to achieve but it's uh, but it's generally not there so that thing i liked and uh, i was not able to spot any mistake in his uh, the way he has written uh, so for me i think they were perfect perfect okay um okay so you told us um the instructional technologies. Okay, tell me about your experience as a subject matter expert for... Uh, um, as a subject matter, I am still struggling. Uh, I haven't uh, even submitted the second phase of my okay. uh, assignment because uh, I am facing difficulty at the first level only. I am not able to differentiate between facts, concepts, principles. So, uh, I am not able to clearly distinguish like okay. where is the boundary so i'm still struggling at that level but after reading although his uh, the way he has distributed uh -huh. so i think i could try a bit again okay. now okay okay wonderful so we will come okay kishore please tell so like even i have faced this critical issue when i was choosing a topic i a uh, lot of time went into the choosing the topic actually uh -huh. when i compare working on learning objective was very less when i com uh, compared to the choosing a topic for me uh -huh. because i just tried to understand what are facts concepts procedures and principles mm -hmm. using a topic in uh -huh. other way re reverse engineering process uh -huh. so that is why i searched i went into math i went into science then finally i landed at some a uh, new out of the box topic which is very new to me also oh, okay okay that's fine <laughs> so i don't have any hands on experience or any experience i was going to it. ask you to perform the mridang <laughs> going in the class <laughs> so, <laughs> so, i never had any experience so i just i was trying to learn this concept uh, meaning definitions using a topic uh -huh. a reverse engineering process uh -huh. so i felt this topic would be easy to uh, differentiate between the learning objectives uh -huh. and differentiate between the facts and the concepts. Uh -huh. So that was the reason to choose this topic. And uh, coming to her learning objective or the concepts, even the subject was very new. Uh -huh. It's again this issue which I have faced. Uh, it is very difficult to identify the facts, concepts or the procedures or the principle between the, uh, the uh, content which is available. So uh -huh. her topic was math topic. Uh -huh. uh, so it was also an option for me while choosing a uh, subject for my assignment. So I was uh, able to differentiate. I, I have suggested some uh, comprehensive level, knowledge level uh, objectives, uh -huh. but still some work is required, some okay. refining of this uh, facts and refinement in learning objective is required. Okay. So we were working on it together so that she could differentiate the object to say sure okay so i'm going to spend i know it's time it's getting right but um um just trying to help uh both uh, kirtiga and uh, kishore okay so um let's say okay so i'm starting with uh, kirtiga first so this is the relations and the functions is the topic right and uh, so this is the grade 11th topic or 12th topic both progression. Pro progression okay so let's see if the relation i'm just going to do a google right relations and functions in 11th maths this is probably this is a youtube video on that one okay so i think it's also coming with the okay and NCRT text for uh, taking the content and uh, what all are the expectations to be uh, known by these groups. Okay. So, so you refer to the textbook, NCRT textbook, right? So there is a textbook chapter for relations and functions. So then, um, so what are the concepts? Is there any facts within the relations and functions? Uh -huh. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. S- so there are, I think there might be, you know, at least uh, uh, 10 most important facts uh, that you can identify into, um, into this particular topic. So then the concept is, I think the relations and the functions, so relations, it's a concept, right? There is some characteristic. I yes. actually face, uh, I'm actually facing difficulty, like if we look at the uh, definition part, so uh-huh. it's basically that we have defined this thing, so mm-hmm. it would be fact as well when we are talking just about the definition, but it's a concept as well because... Correct. That's why I'm not able to see the harsh boundaries between all these things because I'm able to understand the conceptual level is very much clear to me. I am from a math background, okay. so I know like what are the main mm-hmm. concepts in this mm-hmm. topic. Mm-hmm. But like to differentiate this in this topic analysis uh, structure, I'm not able. Correct. To. Okay. So let let me. I think if I can help you. So sometimes, let's say in the eleventh uh, NCERT textbook, define relations do they have a definition no. so the you know the textbook writers they have a definition right so that is the definition you can just to say this is a you can include in, into us a fact because th- you cannot change that definition right you cannot change the definition so you can include that one as a definition as a fact but if you can change the definition then it become what the description, the characteristics you will add into that, so then it can become the concept. Is that little helpful? So, whatever it is in the textbook, you can just say at the end of this class, students will be able to define relations according to the NCRT textbook chapter 11. I think that is the conditions or information you are giving. According to the NCRT textbook chapter 11, define the concept. Uh, define relations or define functions. So, so that's one learning objective. And um, so the same way, then you will go to the next uh, facts and concepts and principles. Okay. So let me stop there now. Do you at least did you get a starting point now? Okay. Good. Yes. I have a comment. I, I mean, uh, Kishore used it re- really, I mean, really well because it did not just stick to maths and science. Uh-huh. Maybe what Kritika can do, she can take up any, any, any concept. Or you just give the example of uh, riding a bike. Uh-huh. Okay, or it, it can be anything. Uh-huh. Forget the maths part. Uh-huh. Then, if she have to do the same work, then she will be able to differentiate better because this relation and functions, the this is a very, very broad topic. Uh-huh. In mathematics books also, it will take 30 plus 30, almost 60 pages to, you know, <coughs> teach the entire concept. Uh-huh. Maybe functions can be taken uh-huh. or the relations can be taken only. Uh-huh. Then it becomes easy to, you know, navigate through what facts are, what uh-huh. concepts are. Uh-huh. So, my suggestion would be not to go into mathematics, just take any random, random subject uh-huh. what you would want to teach, then it will be easy. Do the topic and answer. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Th- thank you, Salim, for that. So, with regards to um, Kishore's topic, actually Kishore also had this struggle. So, I'm just, I know we are openly, you know, to understand, you know, as a team, as a class, we want to learn. So, Kishore's topic was the Mridangam. Let's say you want to, uh, so what is the end goal? Do, they, do you want to like, do you think about the example of uh, the camera, the digital DSLR camera, you remember that? So what is the end goal? Do they have to really play the Mridangam? Or uh, the subject goal was, end goal was to play the Mridangam, mridangam. Play the mridangam. but uh, it was restricted to one procedure. So I went to that level only, the tuning of the leg. So the subject, it's a uh, practical subject. Uh-huh. So at the end of the... The semester or end of the class, uh-huh. they would be able to play some tunes in the Mridangam. Uh-huh. Okay, so let me take the what you said. So the end goal of the learning task mm. is to tune the Mridangam, like the tune the uh, harmonium or guitar, mm. tune the um, tune the Mridangam. So in order to do that, <laughs> so what are the facts they should know? 
first what is mridangam what is mridangam define mridang it's yeah. not the tabala it's not the right so then so i think in in your i really like how you put it in the table it was very helpful actually <laughs> i think you should see uh, I, I, maybe that's a good practice like you put the concept and then put the really defined things then the learning objectives it was very nice it's really help help okay so i i think you you are starting in that way so all those things can be like what are the three sounds major three th- sir, sounds i told you no sir that was easy because i have chosen this topic uh-huh. so the new topic even i was learning uh-huh. so i could differentiate what is fact and what is concept and it is a generalized topic mm-hmm. when compared to other functions relations or any other algebra or any other mathematical it will be confusing because uh-huh. the top we can we would not be able to match our concepts of facts with those ideology mm-hmm. so it was easy when i have chosen this topic okay so that's it so so technically you know this it's any content in the world can be def- can be defined as facts concepts principles yes any topic i do agree sir. so i know it's it's sometimes the since we are new <laughs> it's a new topic and uh, so then it might be a little challenge for us so let me show you one simple trick about then we will finish today's class so mridangam let's say you are going to teach about mridangam right so so there is there is a way you can kind of get site colon edu slash so what it's okay before before that i let me show you another one so usually when you teach any topics you do a google it right so then how many result around 23 million results came about mridangam do you have time to go through all these <laughs> result no so you need to kind of restrict so there is a way in only in uh, google you can do that site colon edu slash uh, quotation so it came to about how many 2300 23 millions to 2300 so all these its results are coming from where it's coming from dot edu website university website so you can easily go through see this one it's a mridankam uh let's see what it's see here it here you go uh annotations examples phrases I, i'm just showing you know so lot of facts intent drums iowa i don't know which university that one so you can go into different directions like the history of <laughs> what mridangam or uh, so all these are coming from dot edu site by the way you can do this trick for any topic in, even in your literature review <laughs> okay so let's say it's dot edu you know that one right dot edu means what education institution in india it's usually ac dot in let's say what's up talking someone from the indian education institutions there are um uh idc iitb making mridangam there you go in iitb has <laughs> result about how to make you see that so in in your topic so that's why i said um you uh uh so it's your call what is the most important fact things that you want to teach so if your goal is at the end of this instruction students needs to tune the mridangam don't teach them how to play the mridangam <laughs> that's a different instruction same thing the relations and functions just if if you think that's very broad topic just what salim said just to focus on the relations that only that concept okay so then just to our instruction you know again that's the limitations it's coming up 
I know it's time. It's more than time. Okay, great. Thank you. So try to help each others in the same document. Okay. So in the same documents, try to so suggest them how you can write that learning objectives better. Do play. So we will come back on. Actually, I really wanted to give you an assignment for Monday. I will post it in the um, uh, Monday uh, uh, later. So I think it's the time itself.